Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 41. 41. Tom Peterson. Oh yeah. Creator of The Green Biscuit. There you go. Even so it's not green. <laughs> this one at least. <laughs> if you're enjoying those, thank you Tom Peterson. Very mm -hmm. good. Okay, so this episode we've got, uh, it's kind of a heavier episode. So we're going to talk about the state of the sharks. Uh, of course, involving things like uh, you know, Jamie Baker and his whole situation, Evander Kane, and then some. So uh, there's that. There's also the Pete DeBoer extension that was brought up. It was actually something that was already brought up uh, months ago, but uh, we'll just touch on that for now. Uh, a couple prospect news mm -hmm. uh, for three of the prospects of the Sharks organization. Uh, the Week in Review and Looking Ahead, and to talk about our jersey. That's right. We also have the uh, honor of getting a Pavelski goal watch in there as well. Right. Sweet. So, uh, you ready to start the show? Ready. Okay. I'm just going to pull this out here real quick. Oh, God. It's the uh, broken Owen Nolan murderer. I'm, I'm still a little upset about that. Was... Well, for the podcast listeners that's not watching, okay. Paul was upset and calling me a murderer for <laughs> destroying Owen Nolan Bobblehead two weeks ago now. The, the point. The the newest one. The right. one that was, yeah. So Well, it's no longer the newest one. The newest no Owen Nolan Bobblehead. You already broke the old one. Right. Yeah, and we'll get to the Donskoy one soon. That was, that's a pretty good one. So, um, yeah, I just try to stay a little light off the top there uh, because... The first segment we've got here is kind of a state of the Sharks. There's been a lot of news, a lot of events, a lot of injuries and things to talk about recently. And uh, I'm going to let Aaron go ahead and take the first one here. Um, it's the whole Jamie Baker thing, so right. go ahead. So there was an article on The Athletic uh, that came out, I think, over a little over a week, or last week since our last yeah. episode, um, on Jamie Baker. And it's a very good read. Um, Jamie Baker was in a very deep, dark depression uh, has been for I guess for a long time mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately and I guess unfortunately he was going to take his own life after uh, one of the Sharks games last season so this goes through the whole process the article explains what was going on and uh, it's it's a very touching and, and great article and there's been a huge overpouring uh, support for Jamie and it's great um, if you have if you do not have subscription to the athletic you can get a seven day free trial and this article is well worth it if you are a sharks fan or a Jamie Baker fan um, and to see what everyone was talking about and to understand what was going on with his life uh, so from us uh, thank you Jamie for being one of the strongest people that we know and going through this very tough time and coming out ahead um, and yeah. alive mainly and, and and I was able to tell him as much out of practice um, it was me and one other person sitting in the bleachers and uh, Jamie Baker came through the door. He was walking past us to go up towards the, uh, I guess, where the, the media folks sit during practices and whatnot. And uh, I jumped up off the bleachers and was able to shake his hand. And I just, I, I kind of got in close. I didn't want anybody else to really hear it. But um, after seeing him on TV and him saying, I don't look strong right now through tears, um, I, I wanted to let him know, uh, you know, Jamie, you're the strongest person I know. Because um, tears don't make you weak. Standing in front of everybody on live television and telling everybody about your story, a very personal thing that nobody else really needs to know. Uh, being able to do that, reaching out to people who maybe are going through the same situation that you're, you're going through and showing them that you came out on the other side, that's strength. That's the epitome of strength. So um, again, Jamie, if you happen to be watching this, we thank you for everything that you've done for the Sharks organization and um, everything that you've done for people that were watching that night and have read that article and you know they benefited from it and uh, I'm 100% certain that they some people did right so if even you touched one person's life in the kind of that old adage if mm -hmm. you've touched one person's life with your story um, then it was well worth telling and thank you for that and if you're thinking about any kind of suicide there's a suicide hotline we'll yeah. put down here uh, you can call it any any time yeah. Uh, to reach out. So we'll put that at the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I don't know if there was anything else really to uh, touch on with that. Um, just a, a very touching story. Um, for some people, it, it hits home. Mm -hmm. um, for others, it's good insight into what other people might be going through. You know, depression isn't people moping around all day necessarily. It right. could come in the form of smiles and whatnot, and it's, it's buried underneath, and you just don't know. So um, anyway, just uh, again, like Aaron said, it's a good read. So there's that. Um, other sad news, um, Evander Kane's daughter, or unborn daughter, Eva, uh, she 
well, it was, I guess it was a miscarriage then, right? So um, I'm not sure what the wife's name is. I don't and want to say the wife's name anyway if I didn't know. Yeah. But they had a, a miscarriage essentially and that, that child was lost, unfortunately. And that's part of the reason that Evander Kane, probably the whole reason that Evander Kane was out, everybody was saying was probably well, due to... He was, in, he was slightly injured to yeah. miss the first game or two and then this happened. So part of it was injury and then the other part was this happening. Okay, so. yeah. Um, so... That whole thing happened with Evander Kane, and you know he he put that news out there on Twitter, and everybody from the hockey world, right, players from other teams that he never met, mm-hmm. um, co- coaches and and whatnot. Lots of people reached out to him. The folks in the locker room, obviously, um, showing tremendous uh, support. And I I, I kind of wanted to do the same again. I was out of practice, and I had a uh, a sympathy letter that I gave him, and I told this in in the live as well, where. When he came out onto the ice, I you know I started clapping for him, and everybody that was in the stands with me started clapping along with me, which was great because it was this giant show of support for him. Um, he was the last player to leave the ice. He was out there for I think an hour and forty five minutes when usually practice goes for about an hour. Mm-hmm. And when he came off the ice, he stopped for every single person, signed every single thing, took every picture that anybody wanted to take. Uh, both sides of the aisle he went back and forth I, I mean he he really wanted to to be there for everybody because everyone had stuck around waiting for him to get off the ice and so I was able to hand him this this sympathy card and of course it's sealed and everything but um, he knows exactly what it is right so as I'm handing it to him uh, he you know kind of looks up makes eye contact and gives me a very sincere thank you and uh, you could tell you know he was he it wasn't just like a, okay hey thanks appreciate it it was like a you know he he locked eyes and was like hey thank you you know i, I appreciate that and so as he goes to to leave again i start clapping for him and again everybody followed suit so everybody that was there at that practice thank you for for showing that support for him not just make me <laughs> clap by myself <laughs> be kind of awkward so uh you know i think he felt that love and he said as much in an article uh, yeah. recently saying that you know i I felt that outpouring of support, and I'm just amazed by the outpouring of support that's that's around me. And he's got folks on the team that have been through this before, so maybe some guys that he can look to for some advice on how to proceed or you know how to deal with certain emotions and whatnot. So I think he'll be in a pretty good place. Yeah, definitely. Uh, unfortunately, that same group is Curtis Brown, former Shark, who's mm-hmm. analyst on NBC, uh, Pete DeBoer, yeah. and um, uh, Eric Carlson. Eric Carlson, yeah. yeah. So um, he's in good hands with support all around. So uh, he has multiple places to go to. Yeah. So uh, again, Evander, if you happen to be watching, uh, we do appreciate you know everything that you've done for, again for the organization, for the fan base, and everything. And we hope that you heal uh, all in due time, along with your wife. We don't want to just make everything about you, but um, we hope that you know everything goes well with uh, with your wife in terms of that healing process as well. So speaking of Evander, I'm sorry, of uh, Eric Carlson, mm-hmm. um, he's still on the men. We kind of wanted to do like a a state of the Sharks, right? So there's a lot of this events and sad news that's going on, but there's also injuries that we want to make people aware of. If that, as if you're not aware of uh, Eric Carlson being injured already, but he's right. just one more person that's out along with another guy uh, who was injured recently in Shimmick. But yeah. Anyway, Eric Carlson, uh, I think he was, before practice a couple of days ago, he was out there uh, testing out the groin. Uh, he's still not going to be quite back yet, so it's going to take a couple more weeks. Um, everyone's speculating that he's probably going to play in a game or two before the playoffs, mm-hmm. at least test it out. Um, and hopefully it, everything goes well, and he didn't retweak it or hurt something else right. during it. So, um, I mean, there's only so much, once you're back 100% healthy, there's only so much practice can do. You're not in a game type situation. Your your adrenaline's not flowing as much, so it's not quite the same. So they're going to want him to get him up to game speed before the playoffs, not just throw him to the wolves. Um, so hopefully uh, he'll be back, and that's only a couple weeks away. We're we're yeah. getting down to the to the end of the season now. Um, so looking forward to him coming back to the lineup, uh, especially since we have another injury, and this one's a long term injury to Shimmick, unfortunately. Uh, looks like he blew his ACL and MCL, and his I think it's his right knee. Yeah. Um, a very unfortunate turn of events for him. His season was going great. He had a great partner in Burns, and and I think Burns would say the same about him. Mm-hmm. Um, so now we're looking to plug that hole, if you will, for uh, for <laughs> lack of a better term, but to, <laughs> to get somebody that can that could step in and and fill Shimmick's shoes, which right. is saying something for a rookie, right? Oh, yeah. So uh, Yoakum Ryan's been there the last two games, and he hasn't been 
standout-ish. She hasn't been great. Um, who knows what else is going to happen, but that that puts in Heed and Yoakam Ryan in the lineup, which we thought one of those two was going to get moved yeah. back at the deadline. Thankfully, it did not happen. Right. Yeah, no, I, I was I was a shoo-in for, for Heed being moved mm-hmm. because I figured Ryan had the spot at the beginning of the season and that Heed was just not going to get any time. It seems things have shifted quite a bit between those three defensemen, uh, Heed, Shimmick, and Ryan, right? Shimmick went from basically the nobody on the team to being the guy next to Burns, right? Um, he went from kind of being that seventh to being, now he's kind of still the seventh, but he's the guy that they would plug in in preference over Ryan, and Ryan went from Burns' partner to the guy that they have to play right, right now. So, uh, I mean, you said that he's not really standout. To me, he actually did kind of stand out, but not in a good way. Um, he was he tripped over himself in one game. He just straight fell down. <laughs> Um, okay, and then uh, a couple bad passes here and there, a big whiff on a shot. I mean, things like that where, you know, it, it just looked like he really had that rust, which is crazy because, I mean, I, you know, he hasn't played many games, but generally speaking, when you're scratched, you're taking extra time on the ice mm-hmm. to kind of work yourself out of that funk and, and get your, your game down, right? And it just did not translate <laughs> from practice to the game day. So um, I'm hoping Yokum snaps out of it. I'm not overly hopeful or optimistic about it, unfortunately, but this is what we have right now. So it's a it's a good move from Doug Wilson not to make those trades. I think right. he had some foresight there. You know, we've got some issues maybe with, um, you know, Vlasic at the time and then Braun at the time, and he said, okay, when we plug these two guys in, and then you've got Carlson goes down. Now you've got Shimmick out. The only guys that have been healthy have been Burns and Dylan, really. Mm-hmm. So maybe it was the right call. Obviously it was, but maybe it was you know the good foresight of Doug Wilson to not make a trade because there there were calls for Yoakam Ryan yep. at the time. So um, unfortunately, again, that's the, what we're we have to plug in right now is Heed and Ryan. Heed's been playing really well alongside Vlasic. Ryan's really got to hope hopefully get that game stepped up. I but still think, we'll we talked about this in the live, and I think Ryan needs an, another game or two mm-hmm. before we can really judge him. Um, I, again, what I was saying about Carlson, about y- there's only so much you can do in practice where yeah. you're not getting the adrenaline, you're not getting, y- you're not going to hit a guy as hard as you are in a game yeah. versus hitting your own teammate in practice, right? So um, some things are just a little bit different. So I'm hoping that Joachim Ryan gets back to form from what he had from what we yeah. saw last season. I don't know if it's going to happen because... So far this year, he hasn't been able to do it, even earlier in the year when he was starting yeah. on the team. Um, but moving along... Uh, the, well, a, a question that we fielded in the live about this, right, yeah. during the, for the, the, the defense, is saying, well, you know, we, we know that the Sharks can score goals. Can they keep the puck out of the net? Can they win a 2-1 game? And that's to me, is the million-dollar question, isn't it? So you've got two guys that you're plugging in now that are not really in your top six. Yeah. So... I think that Sharks team goes the way that the blue line goes. Uh, if we're playing good, solid defense around Jones, there's really no reason that we can't win two one games. And those two one games should really be five one games. <laughs> I right. mean, with the yeah. firepower that we have, if we play solid defense around Jones, there's really no reason we shouldn't be just demolishing everybody. Um, I mean, you know, rest and everything included. But I, I think that really what it comes down to is the team's going to go the way that defense, team defense plays. I And we'll see come playoff time. I, I still have a feeling the Sharks are going to really... Hunt them down, down and uh, I almost say destroy teams, but <laughs> I, I think they're going to go on quite the run this year. I think they're going to get down to business and, yeah. and know what they have to do. Oh, I certainly not hope saying so. they're going to go sixteen and zero, yeah. but I, I think they're going to win more than not. How about that? Certainly hope so. Well, uh, I don't know if in the playoffs they'll be rolling four lines or not. Uh, maybe, like I talked about in the live, probably rolling three lines and using that fourth just very situationally. Mm-hmm. Um, Donskoy got scratched because otherwise you'd have to put him on the fourth line yep. in this last game. And a lot of people were calling, not for DeBoer's head necessarily, but, you know, what's going on? Why are we scratching Donskoy? Why are we playing Haley, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, DeBoer actually stepped up and defended Haley. He said, well, let's look at his Corsi numbers. You want to know what, what he really brings to the ice? You ask Brent Burns. You ask Joe Thornton. Ask him and see what they say. So... DeBoer's not having it with anybody saying that uh, Haley's not doing his job or pulling his weight. And it, the right move was to scratch down Square, really, I guess. I mean, you can't really base everything on advanced stats. Sure. Just like you can't base nothing on advanced stats. <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't use it 100% one yeah. way or 100% the other way. So I think that's what Pete's kind of doing is is he's balancing it out. And 
sure, like maybe the numbers would be a little bit better with Don Squayan, who knows? But I think, I mean, Kevin Kurz tweeted this out the other day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Don Squayan's going on 25 games without a goal. It's a long time for a guy that should be scoring, you know, some secondary scoring, right? Yeah, he's a skill guy. Right. So um, I think it was time for him to get scratched. I mean, there's still another three, four weeks left in the season. So it's not like he's getting scratched in the playoffs, and it might be good for him. And he usually, when he does get scratched, he bounces back. So I would, I would expect a full bounce back performance from Don Square. Yeah. Getting on the score sheet, maybe not goals, but assists and and making a difference uh, when he comes back. And as far as bouncing, Don <laughs> uh doesn't get much more bouncy than this head here. Um, yeah, this is the <laughs> the Don Father um, at Bobblehead. The Jonas Donskoy as the godfather, essentially. So he's got, instead of the, the cat that the, the godfather pets, he's got the little shark and everything. So I went to the game, actually picked up four of these because I brought the whole family. So uh, I have an abundance of these bobbleheads. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't say that really, because one's for the set, two for the kids, and then I've got one for myself, which I'm willing to you know wheel and deal a little bit. So if uh, you're interested in this one, you didn't get it. But what would you be interested in trading for? Yeah, uh, the Hurdle Shimmick bobble. I would love to have that one because I didn't get a chance to, to go to that Ninja game. Ninja Turtle one? I bought four tickets to that game a <laughs> month or two in advance, and then my son had that hockey tournament that yeah. we talked about last episode, yeah. so I didn't get to go. So I burned 40 bucks for nothing. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, really cool little bobble there. And it's unfortunate because that was the game where he got sat. So he got yeah. sat on his bobble night. Most of the people That's were rough. joking. Yeah. Joking, saying that he would be passing out his own bottles <laughs> <laughs> at the door. So, you guys are rude, man. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. So that's that's the deal with with Jonas. Um, I think uh, we were also talking a little bit about Pete DeBoer there. So um, something that was brought up, like I think we talked about in the live uh, months ago, and Kevin Kurz had kind of brought this up. It was yeah. a Pete DeBoer extension, right? And I looked it up. I wanted to see exactly the yeah. date that he had written about it, and it was December fourth that Kurz wrote that uh, through his connections or through some people at The Athletic, they found out that DeBoer had signed a contract extension last summer because this year was his last year, and so they extended him two or three seasons. They didn't have the details. But this was reported on three, four months ago, so uh, it came out in the news now, and it's kind of odd that it came out. Mm -hmm. Someone else was reporting on it, I guess, or something else leaked. I don't know what. Um, And Kurz is like, uh, already been there. I already said that. Like, (laughs) go check it out. Yeah. And he did, December 4th. Yeah, and it was weird. It was like the Devil's Insider or something. I forget what the handle was, and yeah. we're not going to bother putting it on screen because our super British Jason doesn't want to do that. But <laughs> um, So, yeah, it was like Devil's Insider or something. I don't know if they're still holding on to something because that was the last right. coach that they had prior to. But, um, yeah, just kind of weird that they would bring that and back up. It's funny so. because this is an article uh, kind of defending DeBoer, saying, because people were calling for his head back right. on December 4th. And thankfully the Sharks did not fire him mm-hmm. and look where they are now they're mm-hmm. currently as of today they're the third team in the league and second in the west yeah in the western conference which is insane yeah. which unfortunately is the second team in the pacific division yeah. as well <laughs> but second in the division means you're third overall in the nhl i think your job would be safe yeah right pretty sure not because you're benching donskoy and not playing him on the fourth line <laughs> i just a little <laughs> jab there <laughs> uh, so, uh, anything else you want to? I mean, again, it was, it's it's kind of old news, but uh, it yeah. was resurfacing and people it didn't was. realize it. So we thought we'd just hit on that subject right. a little bit. But anyway, moving on from that, um, prospects. I, I wanted to take a look at some of the prospects, some of the the ones that were actually the later round draft picks, and I cannot believe I, the Sharks. Like they they have a monopoly on all the late <laughs> round picks. This is this is incredible. I mean, granted. Nobody has done anything. Nobody on this list has done anything at the NHL level sure. yet, but this bodes well for the Sharks' cupboard of yeah. prospects, um, which usually are a little bit low. No, yeah. I agree. And, and for people to say that we don't have you know, prospects on the shelves, right? Or get upset when uh, Wilson trades away a high round draft pick. Yeah, yeah. And then you go back and you look at what these guys are doing. And we're just going to go ahead and throw these stats straight up on the screen right now so you guys can see them. It's easier. Um, Joachim Blickfeld... He's got 68 games played, 53 goals, 61 assists. Are you kidding me for 114 points? This guy was drafted in the seventh round, 210th overall. He leads the WHL in points, and he's second in the CHL. That means between the WHL, the OHL, and the QMJHL, he is the second highest point getter (laughs) 
between three <laughs> leagues. It's nuts. Uh, Noah Gregor, he's also got 63 games played. Or not also, but he has 63 games played. 43 goals, 45 assists, 88 points. He is fifth in the WHL in goals. And, and let's look back at Blickfeld real quick. He's got 53 goals. I mean, he's... He, Noah is fifth. <laughs> so, yeah, Blickfield's up there, too. Um, he was a fourth rounder, 111th overall. Still, like, just, just phenomenal what they're doing here. Um, and then look at Sasha Sh- Sh- Sasha Shmelievsky. I think I got this name. I can't wait till this guy gets the NHL and everyone <laughs> just trips over his name. Yeah, yeah, anyway. So he's got 56 games played, 35 goals, 40 assists, 75 points. He was drafted as sixth round, 185th overall. I cannot believe... The rounds that these guys were drafted <laughs> in and how well they're doing it's yeah. ridiculous the amount of points these guys are accumulating right now yep. and and I think with Blickfeld he's second in the, the CHL there's only one player above him and he's got like I think three points on him I think it was 117 points okay I mean it's it's like that close the other thing that I thought was amazing about these guys is when you look at the splits between goals and assists it's almost 50 50 so they're contributing up and down the ice not just, I mean, not, not just, just making assists. Score. You take a look at like Eric Carlson's stats from this season yeah. so far. Yeah, got Three <laughs> goals and a myriad of assists, right? Like he's great His shot, shot man. percentage is like 1%. <laughs> it's so bad. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's, but it's my point is like he's setting other people up and that's important. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, with three goals out of, like, like, some odd points. Joe Thornton, when he was, yes. you know, <laughs> in his prime, he's he's got 15 goals and 90 assists right. or 100 assists or so something. So these guys are splitting almost even, yeah. which is, I mean, that's almost purebred goal scorer, really, because the assists are kind of happening just by chance, usually, right? Because <laughs> it's a rebound. Yeah, exactly. Puts it in. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, I, it's just, I mean, I take a look at these guys, and these are just three of the prospects. There's, we're not even talking about Shakovich yet, right? Uh, right. And, and he's doing really well. He was a seventh-round pick as well. Mm-hmm. So, that's a seventh, a fourth, a sixth, and a seventh that are really good players in their respective leagues, and in some cases, all three of the, the CHL don't, leagues. You don't usually find scoring. At no. Those later rounds, you don't find these kind of higher scoring yeah. players. You, you're, those are more like your grinders, third, fourth line guys mm-hmm. that you're, you're picking up there. Yeah. So this is incredible for the Sharks to add to their lineup eventually. Yeah. It, it, and it'll be absolutely phenomenal to see these guys jumping onto the Barracuda at some mm-hmm. point. And, you know, Even if they're not ready to jump straight into the NHL, cool. But I mean, well, once their seasons end, they're eligible to go yes. play for the Barracuda. So we'll be able to see some of these guys hopefully yeah. um, in the in about a month. We'll probably see the two CHs, <laughs> Shmeliewski yeah. and Shikovich. We will probably Which, see both of them. And they played last year, doing the same thing. Exactly, where they jumped yeah. up and played, yeah. and they made a difference. They got the they dragged the Barracuda up yes. to the playoffs and won their first round. Ah, uh, no, they lost in the first uh, round. But they, I mean, they basically made them competitive. Yeah. Right, and I'd love to see if Blickfeld is able to do the same thing. If they be able to pull him onto the team, because my goodness, this guy's got crazy <laughs> skill, crazy yeah. skill. So, guys, there's a lot to look forward to. And if you are not going to Barracuda games yet, do it next season <laughs> because I'm or sure they, you'll see some of month. these guys in a month or in a month. Yeah, yeah. go ahead, check it out. In a month. Just check them out anyway. Who cares? Yeah, yeah they're they're so it's all fun games. So it is, um, and they're cheap. They're super cheap. Like I said, I I prepaid for four tickets and it only cost me forty bucks and and four. Turtle. You bought four bobbleheads that you did I know. pick up. It's too bad. Basically. Oh, well. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. So we uh, had the weekend review. We're going to go ahead and go through those games. We started off in... Minnesota. Minnesota. <laughs> State of hockey. State of hockey. And one thing I noticed about Minnesota, they have all the banners of all the teams up in uh, in their arena. Is that because they th- like banners? I don't know. I don't know what, yeah, if they're just like, they're like, like Nashville. Nashville? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know if that's the case or if they're just like, we're the state of hockey, we're going to represent everybody. I, it's just kind of weird. That's kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, I, I like it, but at the same time, if I was in Minnesota and a fan, would I like it? Kind of sound deadening, isn't it? Maybe, I don't know. That's why it's so quiet there. <laughs> 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 anyway, Minnesota, 3-0 win, right? Minnesota that was yeah. a great uh, start-to-finish win. Um, there was an interesting goal in that game, <laughs> right? Uh, so we saw in the Boston game a couple weeks ago now where the Bruins tied the game late on a high stick, high touch, yeah. and uh, wasn't called because it wasn't reviewable. This time, it goes the other way, where Couture pulled the puck in offside, yeah. got a breakaway, didn't score on the breakaway, which is important. Got hauled down and or tripped or whatever, and gets a penalty shot and scores on the penalty shot. Well, you can't review the offside because it wasn't a goal because he didn't score on the breakaway. Had he right. scored on the breakaway, it no wouldn't goal. have been a goal. Yeah. So um, 
I have a feeling the NHL might take a look at this <laughs> in the summer and maybe kind of expand yeah. or maybe um, I, I don't I mean I don't know how you'd change that around to add that to the replay because yeah. it's a scoring chance really yeah. it's the penalty shot's not a guarantee they're going to score so I don't know that's unfortunate for the wild but and- Everything balances out in the end. <laughs> with, I don't know. I think, it, I mean, if you were to review it, because, again, it, you don't know if they're going to score on, on that penalty shot or not. So, so you're going to open have up to know, every offsides play is reviewable? You'd, you'd have to know before he takes the penalty shot whether or not you're going to say it's disallowed. Because That's right? Tough, yeah. So Because otherwise, why, why bother doing the penalty shot? If he makes it, then you have to go back and say, and say it's disallowed. You would want to know before you even bother taking the shot, right? So in the rules, like I'm trying to think of how to amend yeah. the rules. Would it be if it was a goal or, or a, leads penalty to a penalty shot? shot? Yeah. So Sure. I guess. <laughs> Is this becoming the NFL? I, that's like, what I don't want. That's what nobody wants. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't you know. You can this see seems... how badly the NFL has messed up their whole replay system yeah to me it would i i think we talked about this last week too um i almost would rather have toronto kind of take over the yeah. situation and be like ah eh, boys you got it wrong yeah and buzz them in and be like this should be a penalty shot i kind of feel like toronto should be the kid the older kid on the playground that says no that's not fair yeah right i don't care what the rules say that's not fair right yeah. and just no we're gonna reset because that also takes the honest off of the refs in a yeah. way right so you can't really get mad at the refs because it's <laughs> toronto making the call right so it, it saves them a little face i guess sure i don't know no, i like it i don't so know if, it, yeah it, the, the thing here to remember is in against boston that cost us the game against Minnesota. It put us up three nothing, so it really wouldn't have mattered. Uh, even if Minnesota scored a goal, that's there's still a goal behind, so yeah. really would not have mattered one way or the other. We're still up by by a pair. So moving on from that game again, a three zero win. Let's just credit uh, Martin Jones real quick for the shutout. Yes, I'm happy with that. Let's let's give yeah. credit where credit's due here. Okay, uh, and then the next game was Winnipeg. That was an amazing game. Yes, it was. That was oh man, what a nail biter that at the end was. Trading chances. Oh, and the very end. I, I mean, we're not spoiling it for anyone because it's no, already, it's week already old, over. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Joe Pavelski scoring with what three seconds left in the game? Four, I think is what it Four? was. Four. Yes. Yeah. Uh, unreal. Just stealing the game, stealing mm-hmm. two full points away from Minnesota. Now imagine if this. We talked about this last week. What we would make changes to it. I said three points for a game, right? Mm-hmm. There's three points up for grabs right. for a game. Imagine, oh, we're going to overtime. We're only going to get two points or one point, right? And then all of a sudden you steal all three. <laughs> that would be such a big swing for a yeah. game like this in the standings. I uh, think it would be even more exciting. That's the, very true. And, uh, and, you know, something that if they did go to that format, man, uh, that, that hurts a whole heck of a lot more. Right? It really does. I mean, it still hurts because they get no points. Yeah. In this situation, they got no points. And Winnipeg right now is struggling in a way. So yeah. they needed that. They needed at least the one point going to overtime. Yeah. Um, and they are a very, uh, they're a very dangerous team as well as the Sharks, like uh, offensively. But man, uh, and hell, uh, all right, everyone talks about Martin Jones, right? How bad Martin Jones is. Hell, I always Hellebuck, Hellebuck, <laughs> Hellebuck is not think, having a good year. Think like a Californian, Hella. Well, I, I see the Y in there. I go Hell <laughs> Yeah, Hellebuck, Hellebuck, right. Hellebuck, Hellebuck. Yeah. I like hella bucks. <laughs> exactly. Like hella bucks. That's how we get paid. Right. Hella bucks. Yeah, we get paid hella bucks. No, him. No, right. Not us. We don't get paid anything. <laughs> we get paid no bucks. Right. Go ahead. Anyway, <laughs> um, imagine the Winnipeg fans. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Upset with hella buck and where they're going to go, right? And Brassois is their backup, and he's playing awesome. Okay. So... What? Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, can, you can't say hella buck, but you can say Brassois. <laughs> well, yeah, that's easy. Okay. There you go. It's French. Shorter. <laughs> uh, speaking of French, uh, Vlasic was actually the guy that made the play uh, that led to the breakout. Yes. I did not notice that until actually after the fact. I was just so hyped about the goal. <laughs> and uh, uh, Super Heat Grip Joe actually was like, yeah, you got to check this out. He goes, I thought for sure it was like 11 seconds left. Yeah. Pass goes across, and it looks like it's going to get one time and in. And all of a sudden, <laughs> here's Pickle's stick. Boop, knocks it out, and then boom, the break happens, he right? He read it very well. Yeah, yeah, he did. So, hey, again, we want to give credit where credit's due. Vlasic's been having a little bit of a rough go. That was a phenomenal play and a great read, and I it think, led to the, the game-winning goal. And he was on, like, a four-game point streak from... Oh, was I think he? that was in part of that streak. Nice. And a great assist. There you right? go. 
So, yeah, right after that, Timo brings it up. A nice little sauce pass over to Pavs. And they were wondering if he knocked it out of the air. But it, he says it, it landed flat. It, yeah. it lasts. So, um, but I think it might have landed as he was hitting it. My yeah. goodness. Like, it, there was no time on Unreal. the ice there. Unreal. Just nuts. And the celly was great, too. Yes. All up against the glass. Timo jumps on him. Yeah. Oh, man, there's nothing like hockey hugs. Yes. <laughs> anyway, we won't dwell on that one. Uh, let's move on. So then there was the Florida game, which was unfortunately a bit of a downer. Florida won uh, almost a trap game, yeah. if you will. So the Sharks were playing ooh, at that point. I think it was the f- uh, third game of five nights or something. Yeah, four nights, three games, four nights. We had the back three games of four nights. Yeah, back to back with Winnipeg, and then we had one right. day off, and then yeah, yeah, just a brutal home game. Like mm-hmm. they were on the road, and they came back for this game against Florida, and um, you can tell the Sharks were tired because they were taking a lot of penalties, a yeah. lot of stick penalties, uh, stick infraction penalties. So. Um, yes, Florida is not a playoff team. Yes, Florida is not as good as the Sharks. Most teams are not as good as the Sharks. It was a brutal scheduled game. And uh, unlike the NBA, there's not <laughs> a lot of parity. So, um, which doesn't have a lot of parity. I mean, the NHL does. Right. Every team, every even the LA Kings that we're about to play this week is not going to be an easy game. Right. So there are no easy games in the NHL. Case in point right here. People are upset because it's Florida and they should beat them, right? Right. They didn't. So, um, not much to say other than the scheduling was bad. They were tired. It was obvious they were tired with all the penalties they took. Yeah. Well, and you have to still remember, we still had guys that were out and mm-hmm. injured. And so, I mean, that, that does factor in. This isn't, it's not a video game world where everybody is plays up to their stats every single night. It was right? also the first game without Shimmick. Because yeah. he left in the Winnipeg game. Yeah. That's when he got hurt. And I think it showed. I think mm-hmm. that's one of the things that we have to remember is, yes, Shimmick is the one that's injured, but Burns is also affected by this. Mm-hmm. Not just because he has another partner they has to figure out uh, in Yoakam Ryan, you know, who's trying Chemistry to and everything. get his stride back. Right. right? Yes, he's played with him in the past, but it's been a while, mm-hmm. and this guy's got a lot of rust to shake off. Right. Um, not just in that, though, in trying to learn that partner, but in trying to unlearn the things that he was used to with Shimmick, mm-hmm. right? So um, th- that can't be discounted. You kind of have to remember that. But there was kind of a bigger, uh, uh, not a bigger story, I guess, than, than losing it, but uh, a supplemental story to the Florida Panthers game. There was a gigantic banner oh. that someone had put up. And I think you're, you're, Aaron's maybe a little bit over the joke now. I don't know. You want to explain this one? Uh, well, <laughs> Mike Hoffman got traded to the Sharks a year ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it at the deadline or was it in the summer? No, I it was can't. in the summer. It was... It was the before Carlson, we picked well, up it was before Carlson. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't remember if it was in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, he got traded from Ottawa to San Jose, and then three hours later was traded yeah. to Florida. So um, there was a joke that oh, Mike Hoffman was the greatest three-hour shark <laughs> ever. Sure, also the worst. If you look at it that way, <laughs> but uh, it, it was funny. Uh, Teal City crew, they they yeah. built they they painted this big banner of Hoffman and. It was funny. They hung it up. A lot of people saw it. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, Hoffman saw it. Yeah. And he thought it was awesome and hilarious. <laughs> In fact, you know what? Super producer Jason, sorry. We're going to throw up this tweet uh, of Mike Hoffman tweeted out. He went after the game after they played and got the banner. Yeah. He took it home with him. So he uh, he met the guy from Till City Crew. Yeah. He, he, he reached out to them somehow, was able to get a hold of these guys. And then he said, you know, I, I love it. I love that the fans, it was, he, he saw it as a, the fans as a show of respect. Right. Yeah. <laughs> For, because the date was the same date, like from here to right. here, it was the same date. Yeah. Um, but he's like, he thought it was a show of respect, which maybe it was. But I took <laughs> it as just <laughs> trolling. Uh, but okay, sure, he liked it one way or the other. It Got, was funny. It wasn't mean. It, yeah, it wasn't exactly. mean spirited. It right. was funny. So gets in touch with them, talks to them about you know wanting to have them come down to the practice because Florida had a practice in the morning before they flew, I guess, or something oh, okay. to that effect. And they were able to to get the banner to him. And so there's a big picture of this thing is huge. I think it's covering like four rows or something. And I mean, it's just massive. So really good job, Teal City crew, making a a nice, cool, fun banner. And, you know, a ton of people saw it and a ton of people on Twitter saw it. And obviously Mike Hoffman being able to meet him and, you know, the greatest shark who ever, (laughs) three-hour shark who ever lived, (laughs) apparently. Also the worst and most average, according to Aaron. Um, So, yeah, it was just an all-around fun kind of story that was on social media. So we thought we'd bring that up because a lot of people saw it. Right. Moving on from the Florida game, then there was the Nashville game. And that one was a little bit closer than the score indicates because it had an empty netter. Right. 
right. And uh, again, people are upset because the Sharks lost to Nashville. However, the Nashville games are usually very entertaining. Mm-hmm. There is a couple scuffles going on. We saw Angry Joe come out, and we <laughs> all love Angry Joe. Yes, I love Angry Joe. He scored a goal after uh, after some altercations. So um, keep angering Joe. I mean, <laughs> granted, we didn't win this game, but uh, it, it is Nashville who is a top team in right. the central division mm-hmm. uh, in the West, and this could have been a potential Western Conference Finals matchup, which it was a couple years ago. Uh, or no, sorry, that was St. Louis, but <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, but Nashville's always, in, I feel like the Sharks own Nashville because okay. they always end up playing them in the playoffs and always come ahead. And uh, I've talked about this before. I'm sure Nashville fans hate the Sharks because of it. (laughs) Kind of like how the Sharks fans always hated Detroit when Detroit was always beating the Sharks. Mm -hmm. So I can see where they're coming from and all that. But anyway, um, a a good game. Uh, Unfortunately, we didn't win. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we should be firing DeBoer or or doing anything drastic. Uh, It's just... I mean, again, we're missing Carlson still. Yeah. Uh, Shimmick's now out. They're still getting used to it. So it, it's going to take a little of adjusting. Yeah. Um, and Nashville is not an easy team. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, it, it's unfortunate that they lost, but I, well, I don't think it was like they got blown out. Yeah, and again, that was the game that Donskoy was scratched for. And, mm-hmm. you know, people saying, see, we should have Donskoy in. It's like, ah, no, because when you looked at that, that roster, Nashville bulked up. They got Brian Boyle. They picked up Granlund. Simmons. They pick, if it's that Simmons, yeah. I mean, they bulked up. I mean, that team did a lot of a lot of acquisitions, really. So, mm-hmm. um, it, when you look at it, was I think it was Simmons and Haley. Who was fight? Haley fought someone. I can't remember who it was now. But really. there it was. I mean, they got took Haley in the box along with. I think it was, think it was Simmons. Yeah. And I'm. I'll take that trade all day. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you, again, here's your paycheck. You've done your job. <laughs> so I mean, I don't know. I, I I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with Haley playing there. And I think it was the right move because Nashville is kind of a heavier team. Hmm. And I mean, you're not going to have Donskoy fighting Simmons. Who are you going to throw out there to do that? Kane. I, I'd, I'd rather, rather not. I'd rather yeah. have him on the ice. You, Dylan. I'd rather have him on the ice, especially our blue line is beat up right now. Last mm-hmm. thing I want is Dylan off the ice for that, right? So. I don't know. Again, for me, I think it was a good, again, good foresight by Pete DeBoer saying this is the player we should have in there. And when you take a look at the score, again, 4-2, there was an empty netter, so really 3-2. Is this a team that we could take in a seven-game series? I think so. Absolutely we can. We lose that one game by a goal. I'm not really stressed about it. They weren't playing against Peke Arena either. That's true. You're uh, UC Soros. Soros. Yeah. Yeah. So, and he's a good goalie. Very good goalie. I'm not discounting him at all. Um but we'll see. I think they played against Soros the last time we played them too, so we haven't really played yeah. Peke yet. So um, it'll be interesting to see what they're going to do in the playoffs. I don't know. Are they going to use? I guess Rene is going to be their guy to give him the big yeah, extension. Yeah, I would think Rene is going to be their guy, and Soros was just getting that that night. So uh, I mean, he's played well against the Sharks before, so yeah. why not throw him in and feel pretty confident in your goaltender? I think you could play Saros against anybody in the league and still pre- feel really confident. He's yeah. not really a backup; he's like a one B. Yeah, yeah, he's a very good goaltender. So mm-hmm. um, we won't look too far ahead to playoffs, but we will look farther ahead into the week, and we've got three games. Three games. Yeah. So tomorrow, another or today for the people watching, yeah. uh, playing Vegas. Okay, at home. And it's going to be an interesting game because there will be no Mark Andre Fleury. Uh, he was out, so they played tonight against Edmonton and they beat Edmonton. Um, but he was, I guess, out of the lineup, and they recalled the, another goalie. So I don't know who's going to start uh, against the Sharks. Suban or the other goalie, right? Yeah, and I forgot who the other goalie is, but <laughs> not important. Um, <laughs> So it'll be interesting to see how Vegas does without Mark Andre Fleury, yeah. who is they're not quite like Anaheim, where Anaheim relies on Gibson so much, but um, they do rely on him for a decent amount yeah. um, to clear up their mistakes in the back. And their back, their defensive blue line is is kind of their Achilles heel. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the Sharks respond. It's another only one night off in between yeah. their last game against Nashville. Um, but fortunately for them, after this Vegas game, they're going to have a little bit more of a break. Yeah, and dissimilar to the Nashville team with Saros being kind of a 1B, that's their backup, Subban is not 
not on par with Mark no. Andre Fleury. No. So um, this one, I, I mean, I would be looking for a big win here. If yeah. we're talking about what we're looking for from the week of games to come here, on at least on this game, I'm looking for a pretty big win against a, a Vegas team that is still trying to accumulate more points and is now hurting in the in the crease. And do you see Don Scoy in this lineup? This line, I don't think so, and here's why: Ryan Reeves. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, I, I think you stick with Haley again. You look at his numbers. You look at him not being a liability. You look at his work ethic. He's out there. He's chugging. Mm-hmm. He's working his way, you know, uh, up and down. He the probably ice, so. knows he's going to get scratched at some point, right? Yeah. He's he's going to be working harder to not get scratched, and he's doing all the right yeah. things so far. I think again. For DeBoer, people say DeBoer wants to roll four lines. I sort of agree, but I mostly disagree. I think DeBoer wants to roll three lines is really what it comes down to. And that fourth line is that identity line, which mm-hmm. I think he's, he's used that phrase before. They have an identity. They have a role to play. And I think that's what he wants to use that fourth line as. I don't think he's trying to score goals with that line. I think when you've got three lines like we have, you can roll those three lines consistently without worrying about one of them getting tired. And then when you need to have those fourth liners out there just as an energy line, right? Right. Or, you know, that's where your PK guys kind of sit, like uh, Melker Carlson does. Mm-hmm. He's a placeholder, essentially. So I, I think it's the right call. And personally, I really like Haley in the lineup. I don't see him as a liability out there. So right. I think even against uh, the, the Vegas Golden Knights, I think you're still going to see Haley in there. Okay. Yeah. So then, Moving on from that, it's the second of a back-to-back now, right? Right. See, again, I thought we were done with back-to-backs like last time around, but here we go again. So, right. so uh, the Sharks are taking a road trip, mm-hmm. and fortunately it's within California. So they're going to be playing against LA Kings on Thursday mm-hmm. and then Anaheim on Friday. Right. Um, so for those games, we were talking about this in the live, who do you think starts in goal? Who would you do? I, so, what would you do? So I, I'm, I think it's going to be Jones against the Kings only because, you know, his former team, which is hilarious. During the live, <laughs> he, he forgot <laughs> that he was a King. He was like, no, he was a Bruin, right? <laughs> I was joking. Tra- I know, yeah. but still, the, the, the trade that was made. I was like, so, oh, I always think of him as a Bruin. <laughs> so Four days that would be Bruin. my reasoning. I would think that he would, again, be playing against his former team. Not like it's his decision, but I think DeBoer is probably going to do that to him. So uh, that's what I would think. And then having Dell play against Anaheim. Anaheim because if he's as good as John Gibson was in the All-Star game, then we're sure to win. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, with Sarcasm. Taking the, jo- taking the Jones out of the, yeah. the equation as, as a former L.A., I would rather do the other way. Yeah. Play Dell against L.A. and play Jones against Anaheim only because I think – I didn't even look at the standings, but I, I'm pretty sure L.A. is the bottom mm-hmm. and then Anaheim's above them. So – um, Anaheim's been kind of playing a little bit better lately, and I'd rather have the stronger, on especially on a back-to-back, um, playing Jones. Do you feel that LA has more weapons offensively than Anaheim does? Uh, yes, but they're not utilizing them. Okay. Then that's been their problem. I think they're one of the lowest, if not the lowest scoring team in the NHL, which is weird considering yeah. how much firepower they have on mm-hmm. that team offensively. Um, yeah. Okay, so LA Kings, moving on to the Ducks. That's the, the back-to-back. You've got who you think you're going to uh, be starting in those games. What are you expecting out of that? I'm, a, I'm expecting wins. I mean, that's that's what I'm expecting out of these. Really. I'm expecting wins as well. They, okay. they These should be slam dunk wins. Yeah. Uh, not that their slam dunks are going to be easy. They're no, going to have no. to work for it. Especially, I think, LA. Um, both teams, actually. They're pretty heavy-body teams. Yeah. So they're going to be kind of grinding out wins. Um, I could see them having problems against the Ducks only because they're going to be grinding out against the Kings the night before. Um, but fortunately, they're not traveling very far. Yeah. That's a bus ride. They're yeah. not getting on a plane. So um, maybe that's better. I don't know. Yeah. We'll I, see. I, I feel like we should just straight up out-talent these teams. Right. Uh, they, they can't match us, um, you know, first, second, and third lines. But so. hard work usually oh, yeah. beats out talent. And I think when the Sharks rely on their talent and not hard work, I think they get in trouble. And I think they need to do the hard work, get up early, close it down, show that they could do that those kinds of games. Yeah, Um, and they should be able to do against both of these teams. So I'm looking for for on the week. I'm looking for a a clean sweep. That's yeah. I was gonna say that's three wins. That's that's what I'm looking for. I I think it's it's in the realm of possibility. Obviously, I think I'd be disappointed with with two wins. Okay, not three. Five points. Okay. Sure. Okay. I think that's fine. (laughs) 
You heard it here. Okay, so uh, moving on from that, we're done with the looking ahead segment there. Uh, there was a jersey that somebody in our live actually f- saw it in the background right. there, called it out. So go ahead. I'll pull it out here. Uh, this, again, comes from our San Jose jersey collector so sweet. Uh, on Instagram. You can give him a follow, and you can see all the rest of his stuff. Uh, this comes from the Worcester Sharks. It's the alternate jersey they had when they played from 08 to 11. Yeah. Uh, it is personalized with McCarthy on the back, and uh, it took him about a year to find this, and he finally found it on eBay, and then he got it personalized afterwards, so it wasn't personalized when he got it. Take a look at this patch, by the yeah. way. This AHL All-Star game, uh, All-Star Classic on, right there. That is so cool. I really like that. Yeah, I, think, I like the style. It's different. Um the Rangers have a jersey similar to this, mm-hmm. where it says Rangers coming down the side, or New York. I think they In have New York. both. Yeah, um, and I like it. I, I think like it's it's though. different. I think it's uh, it's kind of a classy looking jersey. Yeah. It's heavy, um, <laughs> but it's it's nice and uh, again different. So it's using that gray color, and that well, I don't think the Sharks have the gray anymore. They got rid of it. Yeah, uh, their old jersey or their old logo had gray. Well, this was in Worcester, it. so right. we're talking 2008. And Worcester right? will always use the old patch. Yeah. They never switched. The right, right. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think it looks cool. It looks different. Kind of looks like a practice jersey yeah. a little bit, but <laughs> not. You know? Definitely heavier than a pra- practice jersey. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. Okay, well, uh, my goodness, I guess that brings us to the end here. Was there anything else to... You know what? We forgot. We forgot, and I'm going to put it right now. Pavelski Goal Watch. Oh, no. <laughs> Way to end the show with it, huh? 37, the man's up to. Yeah. We're getting close. Yeah. 40. So uh, how, how many games left? We've got 10. 10. 10 games. He's got to get four to get to the over-under that we were talking about for yeah. 41. That's going to be close. Hopefully he can get one or two in a game. That'd be nice. I, I hope he gets three or four in a game. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, wishful thinking, so whatever. Yeah, I, th- I still think 40 is in the realm of possibility here. We thought it was a slam dunk. Mm-hmm. We're wrong on that because it's not a slam dunk. Uh, he's going to get close. What I do you think? I, over 41? Yeah. The mark? What happens if, if, what happens if, if we push? <laughs> if you match it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think what he gets think? over. You think I he think gets he over, over still? I still think he's over. 42 or like 42. 47? No. Okay. 42. Okay, 42. He's not going to get seven goals in 10 games. 10 goals. He's not going to get 10 <laughs> goals in 10 games. <laughs> Could happen. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let us know what you guys think. If you think he's going to hit 41, 42, or 59. I bet he tips in three and scores four. Oh, wow. Seven goals. You're telling us how it's going to happen now. No, I'm just kidding. That's okay, I think I said this in the live. <laughs> that head doubles as a magic eight ball sometimes. So, anyway, uh, thank you guys. This is the end of episode number 41. We do appreciate all your comments and everything. Yeah. So, uh, please do subscribe and hit the bell. Join us for the live sessions. We love doing the live sessions. We happen, uh, we have them in 9.30s pretty much every Sunday. Yeah. So if you're not out like us uh, and you like talking Sharks hockey, please jump into that. So with that, I will end. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. And we will see you next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.